Hi, so I am a fan of bellows. Yes, those kind of things that you find on blacksmith's forges or to get your fire going or working heart respirators. And I think they're awesome things and tremendously useful and I've done videos on them. However, about a year or so ago, there's a company called Sunfolding that came out with a bellows driven solar tracker. And I actually thought it was awesome because it's a great use for bellows and bellows and pneumatics. They have um, singular properties that make them appropriate for things like solar tracking. They're incredibly robust, they're um, mechanically very simple, the maintenance on them is ludicrously almost non-existent. So they've just got this huge amount of advantage for an application like solar tracking. And then there is another idea called soft robotics, which is even more exciting than bellows, if that's possible. It's the um, brainchild of a guy called Liam Dorham, and I'll talk about that later in the video. It does bring to mind a thought, and that is, is solar tracking actually worth it? Now the sun has three elements to the light that it's providing. There's the direct light, the diffuse light, and the reflected light. Now the direct light is the one that creates the shadows, if you like. The diffuse light is the reason we see a blue sky, and the reflected light is the light bouncing around from the ground, which is leading to this double-sided solar panel thing that's going on at the moment. 20% of the sun's energy is in the direct light. So you want your solar panel to be hit directly by the sunlight and of course we live in a world and in the world the sun rises because it doesn't actually the world spins unless of course you believe in the flat earth when the sun does rise then it's probably pulled by a carriage full of golden horses whatever what we see is the sun coming up and of course it goes along the sky and drops back down so if you've got a fixed solar panel, as the sun comes up, you don't get any direct light. You only get a direct light when it's overhead from the panel, and then as it continues to move, you lose that direct light. So of course what you want to do is move your solar panel so that it follows the sun and receives all of that direct light for as long as possible. And that's one thing that you can think of in solar tracking. But of course we also have a year. And in a year, the sun moves along the horizon. It doesn't really, the Earth moves in relation to the sun. But what we see is in summer, the sun can here, be here. In winter, it's over here. And in spring, it's over here. It's actually 23 degrees either side of the summer solstice. So this 46 degree movement of the sun along our horizon. So equally, if your panel is fixed, in the uh, summer, the light, sorry, spring, the light comes from here. Summer, it comes from here. And winter, it comes from here. So not only do you want it to track in that direction, you also want it to track in that direction. So that's called dual axis tracking. When we have it only moving that way, it's single axis tracking, and when it doesn't move at all, surprise, surprise, it's called fixed. Now, the systems involved in doing it get more complicated, more expensive, and more prone to failure, the more points of tracking you have. So essentially, if you bolt your solar panels onto your roof with a good rigid, sturdy framework that's going nowhere, it's the cheapest option. If you start trying to make them to track, then you're going to add expense to it. So it becomes a question of, well, how much more energy can you get by making the thing track? Well, on this tracking for the summer, winter, spring movement of the sun, it's piddling actually, it's about two or three percent that you'll get. So given the extra expense, it's not common to find that kind of tracking going on. What you normally find is single axis tracking, where it moves in relation to the sun as the sun moves overhead, because on that kind of tracking, you're getting something like 25% extra power. So you get a lot more extra power by single axis tracking, you get more by dual access, but it becomes questionable about how much more you get. The reason it becomes questionable is because there's a cost involved. Now, when solar panels were an arm and leg to buy a quarter inch one, because they were all brand new and everybody was astonished by them, it was worth tracking. And you found these huge tracking systems and everybody thinking about it and everybody worrying about it. But then, of course, over the last few years, the price of solar panels has dropped into the boots. And so now it becomes a big question. Here's a breakdown of the costs involved in a small solar panel. It's about half a meter. You'll notice the total cost is about $147. And of that, the motor cost is $15. 
So when thinking about a tracking system, the bulk of the tracking system is made up of chunky bits of this and that to hold the thing in place because you're not only thinking about the weight you've got to move, you're thinking about windage. If you've ever taken a bit of eight before out into the wind, you know what I mean. A wind can exert a tremendous amount of force when you hang something up there and you need something chunky to keep it all in place, especially if you're going to be moving it around. Solar tracking will improve system output by about 25%. Unfortunately, the cost of everything you need to implement solar tracking costs about 25%. So there's not a lot of difference in there. So of course, reducing the cost of a solar tracking system is pretty much a big issue, which is why the sun folding bladder is really quite important, because they're very much more inexpensive to install and to maintain, and they need less in the way of control, and they have that little bit of bounce that you actually need, rather than having to arrest it and stop. So bladders are awesome for that. However, they are not the only thing that's going on. There's a guy called Liam Doran, who's working on a soft robotic actuator, as he calls it. And it works on the principle of heliotropism. Heliotropism is that effect that turns a sunflower head to follow the sun. It's mimicking a natural effect. And what he's done is mixed ethanol with carbon and silicon to create a material that will swell and expand when it's heated. And if you link that up, you can get that to follow the sun and of course join that with the solar cell and you get yourself a tracking system that needs no electronics at all to run it and that's obviously going to reduce the cost of maintenance even further so a lot of effort is going into creating solar tracking systems that are much cheaper than the ones we currently use and much more robust than the ones we currently use. There is an effort at heliotropism, incidentally, that um, I think it was Nighthawk who replicated something that NASA did, where you have a solar cell in the sun, and when the sun hits the cell, there's enough power to drive a motor. It's a brilliant idea, with the problem being, of course, if it's a cloudy day, it just doesn't work. But heliotropism is supposed to work whether the day is cloudy or not. Batteries at the moment are horrendously expensive, and they don't last that long. And if you're tracking the sun, of course, you're getting more hours of usable daylight, and so the period of time in which your batteries are required to back you up is shorter. Therefore, your battery bank can be smaller, and therefore cheaper. So, of course, the answer to the question, is solar tracking worth it, is not really a simple answer. That's unfortunate, because yes or no would be great. But it comes down to a number of factors and how they influence your decision. For example, are you off-grid or tied to the grid? Being off-grid means you need a larger battery bank, and so it's going to be more expensive in that respect. What, where are you going to put these things? If you're going to put them on the roof, what kind of cost in structural changes are going to be involved so it can take the weight of the tracking system? And then, of course, there's the issue on how complicated is that system and how much does that system cost? What kind of maintenance is it going to require? All these factors interplay with each other. But clearly, what's interesting here is the developments that have been made to reduce the cost of solar tracking, because that reduction in cost, of course, improves the efficiency of the solar panels you have. Sunladder have a product on the market. It's been used predominantly in uh, commercial installations, of course. The um, Liam Doran answer that's currently under investigation looks very promising indeed for domestic application. Anyway, whether you're involved in solar or not, if you're thinking about solar or not, I personally find it exciting to see what's going on in the world of solar so that we can improve the output without spending an arm and a leg. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.